Pokemon names are usually very creative. Squirtle, for instance, is Squirt and Turtle put together. Mew references the sound that cats make, Machoke references, well, choking. But sometimes the creative solution is just change one letter, and then you end up with a name like Seal. This name bothers me so much. While many Pokemon are clearly based on animals, their designs and names usually give them a level of abstraction from the real world, which creates a wonderful illusion that they're from a fantastical world other than our own. Seal, for me, just breaks that illusion. It prevents me from suspending my disbelief and really takes me out of the world of Pokemon. As a kid, I remember that this bothered me so much. Well, today I'm going to be doing a playthrough of Pokemon Yellow with only a seal, so maybe it's going to prove itself and earn some of the love that it's been yearning for all of these years. After all, water types are really great in Kanto, so I think that today it's probably going to impress me. Here are the rules for the playthrough, and I've also left them in the description so that you can reference them later. Now, let's get into it. To start, Seal only has access to Headbutt, and this is honestly a double-edged sword, because it makes all the trainers in the early game really easy, but it's really going to slow me down at Brock. At least it's a base 70 power move, but the fact that it's a normal type means that I'm probably going to be training here until I'm in the mid-teens. I was hoping that this water type would be able to achieve a fast Brock split, but disappointingly it won't. Seal, the list of ways that you've disappointed me only grows larger. However, Seal does start to impress when you look at it in comparison with all of the Pokemon that do evolve in Generation 1. As a first stage Pokemon, Seal actually ranks 6th, with the same base stat total as Pokemon like Sandshrew, Growlithe, Shelter, Execute, and Eevee. There are actually only 10 base form Pokemon with higher base stat totals than these. Seal's base stats are 65 HP, 45 attack, 55 defense, 70 special, and 45 speed, which gives it a roughly 9% chance to crit in Generation 1. So flipping back over to some negatives for this little creature, uh, it's using one of its lowest stats at the beginning of the game with Headbutt. That's really unfortunate. However, it is nice that Seal gets great special. After all, it's a water type, so uh, base 70 special is going to be put to good use. But 45 base speed also means that it's not going to move first in many situations. Luckily this is a solo playthrough, I'll probably be overleveled and have a lot of stat experience on my side making up for this deficit. Seal has single weaknesses to grass and electric types, the latter of which are specifically known for their speed stats, so I think that they could pose a serious threat. One great synergy for Generation 1 water types is that a high special stat powers up same type attack bonus moves, and it also helps minimize damage from both types that water types are weak to. So I'm hoping that today this is going to be enough to let Seal speed through the game. Today I decided to fight the optional rival west of Viridian City. I chose to do this for two reasons. One, defeating him will give good experience, preparing me for Brock slightly faster. Two, if I win against him here after defeating him in the lab, which was an easy fight because of Headbutt, then he's going to pick Jolteon, making this challenge as difficult as possible. After all, I did say that electric types are probably going to be Seal's worst enemy. With him out of the way, I buy some vitamins in Viridian City and make my way north into the forest. Here, I'll defeat all the trainers to gain as many levels as possible. Hopefully, I won't have to train for too long after that. I catch a wild Pidgey along the way, makes sense to just catch it here if you can, and then I run out of power points for Headbutt, and I have to defeat the mandatory bug catcher at the end of the forest with Struggle. I finish my time in the forest by using Struggle to finish off as many Pokemon as possible, and then with my health low, I proceed to Pewter City to heal. Before investing my time in grinding, I want to see just how close Seal is to defeating Brock at this level. After all, I'm doing repeated playthroughs with pretty much every Pokemon now, so I'll get another chance to optimize Seal later on and not face him when I'm just going to lose. To prepare a little bit more though before Barak, I do face the Junior Trainer. Headbutt makes this a simple victory, and after that, I heal up and then face the Rock Solid Pokemon Trainer for the first time. Geodude is first. Seal uses Headbutt, and it does decent damage. An added bonus here is that Headbutt can actually cause the opponent to flinch, and I get one of these on the second turn. Geodude misses once, and I manage to knock it out and move on to Onyx in the green with 32 hit points remaining. Now, how much damage will Onyx take? The answer here, not that much. An added complication here is that I don't have any status moves to use in case it chooses Bide. I just have to keep using Headbutt and let the damage accumulate. By the way, I get a flinch while Onyx is Biding, but it turns out this doesn't cancel it, it only delays it. Seal takes massive damage, runs out of Headbutt, and Onyx finishes the fight with Tackle. Despite losing here, this is going to be possible very soon. I'll train up one more level and then attempt again. I really can't see even in the worst case scenario that Seal needs anything higher than level 16 or maybe 17 to get by this fight. 
It's probably possible at level 14, but I need really good luck against Onyx, maybe some flinches and misses from the opponent along the way. At level 15, I have two more hit points for Onyx. This is very close. I take the rock type all the way down to red hit points, but once again, I lose. All right, I am uh, a bit obsessed with consistency, so I'll train up to level 16 and that should do it. This time I get a critical hit against Geodude on the first turn. Unfortunately, the game balances this out because then Geodude gets a crit. This thing's so slow, it just feels awful whenever it gets a crit. I move on to Onyx, and it's still close because Bide almost knocks Seal out, but Struggle does just enough. So that's a 15 minute and 12 second Brock split, and uh, my editor Sean actually said, like, what happened at Brock when he first was reviewing the footage? And uh, then he realized, oh, Seal only has headbutt. So yeah, if you only know it's typing, Seal seems like it's going to speed by Brock, but it just really doesn't. Anyways, this isn't the worst time ever. Like, it's not Tangela tier. Also, I'm doing another playthrough with this thing. So yeah, I'm just going to take this time and move on. On Route 3, Seal runs out of PP, but there's only two mandatory bugs remaining, so I just power through them with struggle. I really want to get to Mount Moon because just inside the entrance is the TM for Water Gun. It feels so good to finally have access to my best stat and to stab damage. For the rest of the cave, I skip all optional fights, I defeat the Super Nerd, grab the Dome Fossil, all hail the Dark Lord, and then I defeat Jesse and James. In Cerulean, I grab the Hidden Rare Candy, and then I face the Rival. Because I had to overlevel for Brock, this fight is pretty straightforward. And that's something that I'm really cherishing while reviewing this footage and writing the script. Um, yeah, it feels so good when the Rival isn't incredibly frustrating. Uh, that won't be relevant later at all, I'm sure. The Hidden Elixir just after Nugget Bridge lets Seal progress through the route without having to return to Cerulean to heal. But now a trainer that I'm really worried for is up next the last with two oddishes. I use headbutt, the first one survives, flinches, and then faints for free. Okay, that's good. I use water gun to KO the Pidgey, headbutt does the same amount of damage to the second oddish, it uses absorb, seal takes very little damage, and then finishes the fight. It's time for Misty. Her good AI is gonna limit her to using only tackle, harden, and X defend. The fact that she can raise her defenses gets a bit annoying, but seal tanks tackle without a problem and takes the victory on its first attempt. After the fight, Misty gives me Bubble Beam, and this made me think that maybe the best routing would be to defeat her before Nugget Bridge. That would speed up the progress against all of the trainers there. Oh well, maybe next time. I take care of the Rocket next, and the prize for defeating him is the TM for Dig. Unfortunately, and I mean very unfortunately, Seal does not learn it. Ah, uh, it makes sense of course, because uh, Seals are not known for their exceptional digging abilities, but I would just really like it if it could learn this today. Ah... Uh... On the SSN, I grab Rest. For once, this move actually feels thematic because Seal learns it through level up. And also, its evolved form Dugong uh, on Lorelei's team just loves to use this move. You might wonder why I wasted time picking up the TM here. Well, I'm doing that just in case I need to delete Rest at some point and then relearn it later on. Body Slam is next, and I teach it to Seal right away. I grab a rare candy, and then I take on the third rival. And this fight isn't a challenge at all. Again, this one is always really easy, especially if you have Body Slam. But Surge is next, and uh, his Pokemon are fast and electric types, so I'm very worried about this fight. Luckily, he only has one Pokemon. He improves its speed on the first turn with an X speed. Body Slam does half with a lucky crit. Raichu uses Mega Punch, misses. Seal's second Body Slam paralyzes, and that allows me to outspeed and take the win. So that didn't go as I was expecting. I thought that I was going to struggle here for quite some time. Oh well, I'll move on and take the luck for now, but I'm sure that later on Surge is going to come back to haunt me in all of my testing. <sighs> I think most of you are probably expecting the next major hurdle for Seal to be Erica, but it's honestly possible just to skip her until right before Giovanni's 8th gym. Since I'm a mono water type, it's probably best for me to do other things before facing her anyways. I could have skipped Surge, and that might end up being the better solution there. I didn't choose to do that today, and I got lucky, so I make it through Rock Tunnel without any issues. The self-destructing hiker is very easy here. After that is Rocket Hideout, and I go into here just to retrieve an extra rare candy. I like to do this on all my first playthroughs, just so that I have a little bit more wiggle room with how I use these in the playthrough before I've optimized. In the department store, I stock up on repels, and then I grab the TM for Ice Beam. Seal learns this move at level 50, but I'm just going to use the TM instead. I don't want to wait around for this great move until then. And with it, it makes the rival in Pokemon Tower very easy. Like, I don't even make good move selections here, and this fight is completely simple. 
but that ends right away because the Chandler here are a bit scary. Seal's slow, Nightshade is fixed damage, Lick can cause paralysis, and Confuse Ray is 100% accurate. Some of these fights got a bit sticky, but I do make it through without any resets. And now here's a rapid fire summary of what I do in the next section of the game. I defeat Jesse and James in Pokemon Tower, grab a rare candy on Cycling Road, grab a PP up, the most important item, head to the Safari Zone, grab some vitamins, grab some gold teeth like yuck, I don't want these, and then I grab Surf and teach the seal right away. Okay, now it's time for Sylph. Generally, I view water types as very capable in Kanto, so I decide to just go for the rival fight without facing any optional trainers. Let's see if I can do it. He starts with Sand Slash. He uses Slash, uh, fitting, it does half damage, and then faints. Ninetales is next. Uh, this is not looking good. I might have a type advantage against his first two Pokemon, but even then, Seal just isn't up to the task. It's time to train now, and then this random rocket with a Hypno puts Seal to sleep and knocks me out. Well, that's a bad start to my training. Honestly, these Hypno Rockets in here are usually really scary. I try to avoid them at all costs unless I have a really hard hitting physical move or like maybe like a bug move like Twin Needle, but like really only Beedrill gets that. Anyways, now at level 38, I try and face the rival again. Now I outspeed the Sand Slash and knock it out. Ninetales misses Tail Whip and gets crit by Surf. Seal levels up to 39 and Cloyster is next. I don't have a good move here, but Cloyster has low special and I think that Surf is going to be my best bet since it gets stabbed. Also you'll notice that the Cloyster isn't really a threat because it just spams Super Sonic over and over. This is because the rival has good AI, so he's avoiding using moves that are not very effective. Uh, in this case, Water moves. After a bit of annoying confusion caused by the Super Sonic, I end up knocking it out. Kadabra's next. Body Slam doesn't finish it, but it just wastes time with Disable and a Potion and then faints. Last is Jolteon. Ah, uh, check out this interaction. It moves first, uses Thundershock, paralyzes Seal, causing it not to move, and then KOs with a follow-up Thundershock that gets a critical hit. So, that felt really bad. Okay, at this moment, when I was doing this playthrough, I had the realization that like maybe fighting the optional rival early on was just like pure masochism. Uh, not really sure what it's gonna take to get by this fight. However, part of my brain was like, maybe that was just bad luck. Well, uh, it turns out arriving at Jolteon with that much health is actually good luck. And in this case, Jolteon crits again because it has really high base speed and Seal goes down for a second time. So yeah, I need to go elsewhere and train more before this fight's gonna be possible. Eric's gym is probably the correct choice right now. I have leveled up and I do have Ice Beam after all. I spend time grinding here against all the random trainers and then I attempt Erica herself. She opens with Tangela, I use Ice Beam, and it knocks the Vine Monster out. I did not expect this. The entire fight is an easy sweep after that, and Seal emerges victorious. I thought that maybe these additional levels from Erica's gym might be enough to get past the rival's Jolteon, but nope. The rival takes Seal out two more times, and then I decide to head south to Koga's gym. In his gym, there are two mandatory jugglers, and so I'm going to gain some levels here anyways. Now it's time for Koga himself. I use Surf, it doesn't KO the Venonat, and it puts Seal to sleep. However, my Seal isn't snoozy yet because I haven't allowed it to evolve into Dugong. And then it wakes up and I knock the Venonat out. The second one uses Psychic, which does a small amount of damage and then faints. Okay, third Venonat time. It goes for sleep, but once again Seal wakes up right away and knocks the bug out. All that's left now is the Electric type Venomoth. Koga uses an X-Attack, and I use Surf because Electric types don't resist Water-type moves. My attack does one-third, Venomoth poisons Seal with Toxic, and finally a clutch critical hit Surf finishes the battle. To ensure that I'm going to defeat the rival, I head to Pokemon Mansion and collect Vitamins first. I grab Blizzard, this is going to be really useful later on, after all it has 90% accuracy in Generation 1, and then I head over to Blaine's Gym first to face the Fire Master. Seal actually stacks up well against his Pokemon, even better than maybe Dugong would, because the Ice Typing is actually a liability here. The fact that I'm a mono water type allows me to resist the fire type moves. Seal knocks Ninetales out in two hits. Because Rapidash isn't capable of doing much damage, I decide to rest here. That way I go into the fight against RK9 with green health. It misses Takedown, Surf connects, does more than half, Fire Blast does very little damage, and then I knock the Canine out. I should be able to defeat the rival in Sylph now, after all I've leveled up and got some vitamins. Surf knocks the Sand Slash and the Ninetales out in one hit each. Against Cloyster, I have some truly bad luck. Confusion causes self-inflicted damage not once, not twice, not three times, but four turns in a row, forcing a rest. I hit myself three more times, have to use rest again, and then finally take Cloyster out once I wake up. That was really frustrating, but luckily it's over because Seal snaps out of confusion, one hits Kadabra, and I've made it back to Jolteon. 
It still moves first, uses Thundershock, and gets a massive critical hit. But Seal survives with half health, does half damage with Body Slam, survives the follow-up Thundershock, and KOs the Punk Rock Doggo with Surf. Giovanni is easy to finish off. I head back to Celadon, do some final vitamin shopping, and then I face Sabrina. Because Seal is so slow, I don't stack up very well against her team. Sabrina's not very good in yellow though, because she doesn't have good AI. She uses a bunch of random moves. Alakazam finally uses Psychic, but Seal survives, and that's that, I've won. Now there's only one gym left for Seal, the Giovanni gym battle. Dugtrio could one hit with Fissure, but Giovanni uses a guard spec and Surf KOs. Persian uses Slash, and oh my, that did so much. Surf gets a lucky crit, but Persian hangs on with a sliver. It goes for Slash again, and Seal faints. To make this fight more consistent, I train in Giovanni's gym, and that takes Seal all the way up to level 50. With the league just around the corner, now seems like a good time to use some more rare candies. I use 8, and then I face Giovanni again. Dugtrio uses Fissure, oh no, heart palpitation, but it misses, and Surf finishes the mole off. Persian sets up double team, Surf takes it into the red, misses, Seal takes a third from Slash, and then I knock the mobster's cat out. Surf crits the following Nidoqueen for the knockout, and even with regular damage it one hits the Nidoking. Because I have 4 times damage for the ride on, this fight's over. Now it's time for the final rival before the league. This is going to be a good test of just how well Seal will stack up against the champion. Specifically his Jolteon. But I shouldn't get ahead of myself, he's got an entire team before that. Sandslash is first. Surf takes care of it, Execute follows, and faints to a single Ice Beam. No status conditions for me today. Ninetales is a simple one hit with Surf, and then Cloyster is next. It's probably going to confuse me a lot with Supersonic, and I'm going to hit myself a million times. Ah, uh, oh okay. Only one time? I, gu I guess that's good. Alright, I'll take it. Kadabra outspeeds, takes Seal to half with Psybeam, and then faints to Body Slam. Okay, so half health for the Jolteon. This does not feel good. And uh, I was right to think that, because Jolteon zaps Seal out of the battle with a critical hit from Thunder. So how am I going to solve this battle? I'm sure all of you are asking that question. Well, uh, if you love consistency and hyper-intelligent plays, brace yourself, because I have an awesome surprise for you. I make it back to the Jolteon, and then I put my plans in motion. Seal gets paralyzed, Steel hits with Body Slam, Jolteon misses Thunder, another Body Slam connects, Jolteon misses again with Thunder, and uh, I win! Consistent and very intelligent plays, that's what you're all here for, right? So yeah, we're on to the league, let's go! Honestly, to this point, Seal has put in a pretty great performance. Jolteon is the singular Pokemon that's holding it back, and is responsible for 6 out of 10 resets thus far. The most powerful trainers in the game are still remaining though, so I'm curious how Seal is going to do. How's it going to fare against Lorelei? What about Agatha or Lance? Will the champion's Jolteon wall Seal, or can I rely on some next level plays again? Let's find out. Lorelei opens with Dugong, Seal's big brother. Now, it isn't going to knock me out, but it could PP stall me. Body Slam isn't doing enough damage to take it down before it wakes up and heals itself again. I was getting a bit worried here, but I managed to bring it down to low health, trigger two super potions, and then a critical hit knocks it out. I recently watched Wolfie VGC's video about critical hits, and I really couldn't agree with him more. This battle that I just had against Dugong is a prime example about how critical hits favor Pokemon that play more aggressively. It's a nice way to balance the game around Pokemon that employ stall tactics, or things that drag the fights on for a long period of time. Okay, now let's get back to the fight. Cloyster's next. I get a critical hit here, and that makes it a two hit. Slowbro comes out, and with that, I've basically done it. I can mimic Amnesia, and this setup allows me to boost my special six stages. Seal arrives with 607 special after this, so that's pretty good. I take my time to heal here. Uh, this is on theme with this battle, just going slowly and then I knock the hippo out. Jinx faints to a single body slam, and all that's left now is Lorelei's ace, Lapras. Even with a not very effective surf, I do so much damage. I survive Lapras' attack, and I win. It's hiker time, and what can I say, he's easy. Fighting rock and ground types don't hold up very well against special attacking water types. I feel like the colon P face is the perfect expression for how Seal feels while it sweeps his entire team. Agatha's up next, and her ghosts have higher special than defense. I'm going to need to hit them with water type moves, and because of that I decide to take things slow in this fight with Substitute. I get paralyzed trying to set it up, which is a bit annoying, but against Haunter I heal with Rest and reset Substitute. And then I get back to using Surf. And then at the end of the fight, things start to get really scary. 
I'm trying to get my substitute back up against Arbok, but Agatha switches Gengar in and hits a big Psychic. My substitute goes up again, depleting Seal's health even more, and then I'm left with a tricky situation. Do I heal and expose myself to Dream Meter, or attack and try and take the Gengar down before it gets me? I play defensively and this costs me my substitute. And then Agatha gives me a gift by switching Arbok in and giving Seal the chance it needs to heal up again. But then again she sends in Gengar and knocks out my substitute. I wake up, she switches again, I can't tell if these switches are good for her or awful, it seems about half and half right now. I get confused, take a massive psychic, take Gengar into red, and then I have to decide to attack or not to attack. I go for it, YOLO, Agatha uses a super potion, Gengar survives Surf, she uses another super potion, but this time the ghost gets washed away. Seal has done it. Before Lance, I teach Seal Blizzard. If I could only have that ice dual typing right now, that would be really nice. All right, Dragon Master, can you contest with this seal? Uh, so that's not good. It appears that I forgot to heal myself. So I use rest right away, but as you might expect, this fight does not go well. And then I make the same mistake again. So uh, I guess I really don't want to heal for this fight. Third time's the charm though, right? I've healed and this time I'm ready. The issue now is that I can't knock the Gyarados out fast. Surf does very little damage because it's resisted, Blizzard is inaccurate, has low PP, which I need later on in the fight, and it's only neutral. This is the reason that I'm using Mimic to steal Hyper Beam, because I don't really want to use my other moves. I try to use two Surfs followed by a powerful beam to knock the dragon out, but it survives. Lance Hyper Potions and I'm back where I was before. I Gen 1 Miss on Surf, and that gives Gyarados the time it needs to knock Seal out with a Hyper Beam. So that's essentially one loss, because the first two were entirely user error. In the next fight, I figure it out though. I can use Blizzard on turn one, and that gives me the potential for a freeze. It's also doing more damage than Surf. After that, one Surf, then I mimic Hyper Beam and use it to finish the Gyarados off. This way I don't have to spend one turn recharging. Dragoner 1 faints to Blizzard. Against the second one, I knock it out with Surf to preserve power points on Blizzard just in case I miss at the Dragonite. I one hit the Aerodactyl with Surf, and that leads to his ace. But this thing is paper mache if you have an ice type move. And so Seal's done it. I've defeated the Elite Four and reached the champion, with only a Seal, and honestly, in pretty good time. I have to say that where things stand right now, I think it's set up to clock in with like a very competitive time. Jolteon won't be that bad, right? Right? Sandslash is a one hit, and then Alakazam comes out. I use Blizzard first turn, hoping for a freeze, don't get it, and then I need to take it out over many turns. It's slow, and nothing really happens to ruin the fight here, no Kinesis or special drops. Blizzard does more than half to the following Executor. It's gonna use only Leech Seed here, so it faints easily. And then Cloyster comes out. Oh dear. Leech Seed synergizes incredibly well with this thing. Spike Cannon is annoying, it wastes time while I try to heal, Surf is dealing decent damage, but I'm just not doing enough fast enough. Because whenever I use Rest it takes time to heal, this gives Cloyster the ability to heal up with Leech Seed. I need to hope for a critical hit. Finally, I do get one, and Ninetales comes out next. I decide to mimic Confuse right here because it might help against Jolteon, but before I learn it, Ninetales hits Seal with Quick Attack and takes it to 16 hit points. Okay. I need to heal now. Ninetales confuses Seal, causing self-inflicted damage, and that's the first loss against the champion. I didn't even make it to the Jolteon. To ensure that both Ninetales and Jolteon are a bit more manageable, I mimic Earthquake from Sandslash in the next fight. I was hoping it would do more to Alakazam, but I'm always going to be exposed to at least two turns of damage here, I'm just not dealing out enough. And in this case, I get hit with a Kinesis. After that, the Executor isn't an issue, but Cloyster really is. Because I have to take so long to defeat it, it really inflates Seal's real time. I manage to defeat the Ninetales this time and move on to Jolteon, but it uses Thunder Wave, and then Kinesis comes through for the rival, causing Earthquake to miss, and Seal faints for a second time. I've talked about it before, but the gauntlet that is Sandslash, Alakazam, Executor, Cloyster, and Ninetales in this champion fight is absolutely brutal if you have one Pokemon and aren't allowed to switch out. Sandslash can get a crit with Slash, damage with Earthquake, or poison with Poison Sting, Alakazam uses Kinesis, Executor sets up Leech Seed, or could use Hypnosis, and then Cloyster stalls you out. Ninetales can use Confuse Ray if you make it through all of that, and finally I arrive at Jolteon, which can just outspeed and knock me out with a single Thunder. By the way, this Jolteon has 184 speed, so Seal would need to be an unrealistically high level to move first. 
That really isn't the solution. I lose my fourth fight when Alakazam lands a Kinesis early on. I decide to not even try because Cloyster would likely drag things out and would just be wasted time. At this point, I felt really close in fight number five, but Paralysis prevents Earthquake and Thunder Crits. Okay, come on. Fight number six is what I can only describe as truly a slow stall fest. This video file is three minutes and 40 seconds. When you're playing at four times speed, that's roughly equivalent to 15 minutes of play at regular game speed. This fight was not fun. Because of the length of the fight, I lose concentration at the end and I get sloppy and Cloyster knocks Seal out. Okay, uh, are you ready to experience my pain? Here it is. Alakazam crits Seal. Cloyster crits with Spike Cannon. Blizzard misses Alakazam and Seal faints. And I think I have a range for Cloyster, but I don't and Seal faints. So that's 10 losses in a row against the champion. This is feeling hopeless. I think that I might just have to black out and train up more before I can defeat the champion. Seal is getting walled so hard. I can make it past the Cloyster with decent regularity, as is the case with this fight, but then I'm in a terrible spot against the Ninetales that follows. It has quick attack so I could just lose right now, but it uses Tail Whip instead, and that was the moment that it clicked. Tail Whip triggers the badge boost glitch. That means that if Seal starts the fight with 124 speed, I can move first against Jolteon if I get four badge boosts. Here I got hit with Kinesis which does trigger the badge boost, so I only need Ninetales to use Tail Whip three more times. This is risky though because of how confusion damage works. So the way it works is it's like you hit yourself with a base 40 power move with your attack stat against your own defense stat. So as Ninetales lowers my defense with Tail Whip, I'm actually going to be dealing more damage to myself in confusion. However, I think this might be my only way past the Jolteon. I get my fourth badge boost, attempt Surf, Confusion doesn't stop me, and Ninetales goes down. Okay, please let Earthquake knock the Jolteon out. Seal snaps out of Confusion, uses Earthquake, and knocks Jolteon out with a critical hit. That's a real-time finish of 1 hour, 36 minutes, and 49 seconds, at level 67 with 23 resets, and a game time of 4 hours and 53 minutes. As a final fun challenge for Seal, I face Mewtwo in Cerulean Cave. As is the case with Pokemon who learn ice moves, I just have to wait for a freeze to ensure the victory. Turns out, Seal actually manages to get it in the very first attempt. As a reward for all of its hard work, especially against Jolteon, I let this little guy evolve into a dugong. Alright, let's recap. Seal did really well in this playthrough if uh, we just ignore the rival. 15 resets in total were against him, so I need to go back and test especially the rival to make sure that I can find a way to get through a second playthrough and improve my results with Seal. Remember, it's important what I'm doing these tests. I am trying to optimize for fastest real-time finish. If you're optimizing for something like fastest game time, you'll be optimizing for other things, like maybe a lower level at certain place without training as much. First, I wanted to confirm that level 16 is the appropriate level to face Brock. In most fights, Seal wins with around half of its hit points remaining. Sometimes it does better and even has green health left over, but it is possible to cut things very close. However, it's much less likely. I went 9-1 against Brock at level 16, so I do think that this is the best approach. Next up for testing is Surge. Seal does more damage to Raichu with Bubble Beam, but I prefer to use Body Slam for Paralysis. So turn 1, go for the Paralysis, hope for it, and after that play contextually. Bubble Beam if damage is needed or if Growl is on the field, and Body Slam if I want to continue to fish for a Paralysis. Seal ends up going 5-5 five five against Surge at level 26, so at least this fight against him is fast, he only has one Pokemon after all, so losing once and then winning isn't a terrible way to proceed. You might ask why not just face Surge after going to Celadon City? Well I really don't like backtracking through Saffron City if I don't have to, I think it does waste more time than just losing once here to Surge. That wastes about like maybe 15 or 20 seconds, whereas the backtrack is going to waste around 30. At level 40, Seal can easily sweep Erika. I was a bit surprised by this one. While Ice Beam is super effective and Seal has decent special, Erika's grass types also have really good special. Even in fights like this, where everything goes wrong, like Seal gets paralyzed, gets hit with a critical hit from Razor Leaf, I actually still managed to win, so I won all 10 fights against her. Now I need to figure out how to manage the Sylph rival. The key to this fight is to be able to tank at least two hits from Jolteon. At level 46, this is feeling pretty good. Using Body Slam against Jolteon gives me two rolls for Paralysis, and Seal ends up winning 8 out of 10 fights. So these fights weren't difficult to figure out, but now I need to test the final rival fight before the league. At level 60, I uh, win 2 fights, and I lose 8. Remember when I said I had an extremely smart tactical play for this one? Yeah, I, I don't, I just can't see it. Jolteon just ruins Seal's day here. 
In this fight, I can't mimic Earthquake right now because Sandslash doesn't actually know it, and there aren't any other good options for the Jolteon other than leveling up. However, before I figure out what level I need, I should probably figure out what level I need for the champion first. That way I can work backwards from that fight and figure out how much grinding I need before this portion of the game. Okay, uh, are you ready for the most painful test ever? Yeah, this one hurt. So, the problem with the champion fight is as follows. His entire team synergizes together to lower Seal's accuracy, stats, and health, as well as cause status conditions like Leech Seed and Confusion before Jolteon comes out. And then after all of that, it can just one-shot me with Thunder or paralyze with Thunder Wave. Also, it survives Surf. So, stealing Earthquake from Sandslash actually makes the following Alakazam less consistent, because I've taken damage at that point, and then I can take more damage from Alakazam, like a Psychic or something like that. I tried my old strategy of getting set up with badge boosts at Ninetales. I also added Double Edge for a few fights, but both of these ideals don't yield good results. I haven't been up to this point able to win even a single fight with any of these strategies. Actually, so far, I haven't even beat the champion once during my tests, even when I got excellent luck. So yeah, this isn't a lack of consistency, this is just like not working at all even with great luck. Then it came to me that maybe Seal's cute little horn might be the answer. What if I use Horn Drill to one-hit Executor and Cloister, preventing Leech Seed and the Spike Cannon stall? Uh, yeah, this doesn't work. 30% accuracy is really bad. Even if I do take them both out with this strategy, it does nothing to solve the issue that I face at Jolteon. Okay, so I had to consider if I was playing the wrong style of game against the rival. What if I take a page out of Cloister's book? I come back with Seal knowing Surf, Rest, Toxic, and Blizzard. I can knock Sandslash out easily with a single hit, take the Alkazam down with two Surfs, and then I can use Toxic against Executor. It takes a while, but it's pretty consistent. And after that, I can also use Toxic against the Cloister. So far, this is feeling like the best of any strategy. I'm most consistently reaching Jolteon now, but I still have no answer for it. Instead of Blizzard, I bring Mimic to learn Earthquake for Jolteon, but this still doesn't work. So one thing that, say, uh, my fiancé knows about me is that I'm very stubborn. And this stubbornness came out so much here when I was fighting the champion. I refused to level up to defeat him. I really wanted to find a way to do it. I actually had to step away from this because I had spent like two or three hours on it and I was getting so frustrated. Then I came back a few days later to try and solve it again. And uh, I don't have good news about this. Even when I level up, Seal is still struggling. At level 74, my damage has increased, but I still can't one-hit the Alakazam, the Executor, or the Cloister. So the gauntlet preceding Jolteon is largely unchanged. I do manage to win at this level occasionally, but it just doesn't feel good. The only way that I can see doing this is having Seal outspeed the Jolteon right away, or badge boosting one or two times to do it. Now, if I use Rare Candies to level Seal up to see what speed it needs to get past the Jolteon, again the Jolteon has 184 speed, uh, let's all guess what level Seal needs to move first. Ah, uh, it needs level 99! <laughs> so yeah, this is awful! This was the first time that during a test I was not able to come up with a solution that I found satisfactory. Like. I can win, I can just level up to level 80 and kind of get by everything. It doesn't feel consistent, but it works eventually. Normally doing these tests and these playthroughs gets me to like a Pokemon more because I slowly understand how they function best and find the solutions to all the problems that they face. But here, Seal just doesn't have a solution. Because I couldn't find a solution here, I wasn't really sure what to do for my second playthrough. I took a couple days off of this project and then came back with a clear head. Okay, so after my break, I came back and I had to decide how I wanted to do my next playthrough with Seal. I want this thing to get its best time through Pokemon Yellow so I can rank it fairly in the tier list, and so I sort of decided to fold here. I'm not going to face the champion's Jolteon. Instead, I'm going to have the rival pick Flareon, and I do that by skipping the optional fight before Brock. This is obviously going to be easier. I defeat Brock at level 16 on my first attempt. I forgot to face Misty before the rival, so I just don't have Bubble Beam for Nugget Bridge this time. Oh well, it's a bit slower I think. Misty is simple after that. Surge is obviously inconsistent. I lose on my first fight here because he uses Thunderbolt on the first turn, but that's a quick loss and I defeat him immediately following this. To prepare for the difficult mid-game battles, I spend time training in the Dojo, Sylph, and Erica's gym. At level 44, I take the Grass Master on. And we already know how this one goes. Ice Beam shreds her entire team. 
Now, I'm going to expose a flaw in my testing methodology here to save time because these videos take forever to produce. I only test the battles that were difficult in the first playthrough. That seems like fairly reasonable, don't you think? And that means that sometimes fights that I make it through with lucky results don't actually get tested. And in this case, Koga is one of these. The issue here is that Venomoth is taking very little damage from Surf, and it knows double team. I went into this fight with Poison to avoid sleep, but this actually works against me as soon as the Moth starts to stall. I lose two times this way. I try again without Poison, but Koga still prevails. So I was operating under a false assumption here. The assumption was that I should wait as long as possible to face the Sylph rival, because last time he was really challenging with Jolteon. But this time, he has Flareon, so I should have just fought him much sooner and then done Koga after. I come back to Koga one level higher, Surf one-shots the two Venonats, the third one survives, gets an X attack, and then faints. Venomoth is last, Surf does a lot of damage, I miss turn 2 and turn 3 because of double team, but the Moth prioritizes double team giving me enough time to knock it out. And then a truly surprising thing happens. I'm a higher level than before, but this time, Blaine is angry. Arcanine crits with Fire Blast and knocks Seal out. Then in the next fight, Ninetales burns me, so against Rapidash I want to heal, but Stomp causes a flinch and Seal faints as a result. Just great! The next fight, Rapidash faints itself with recoil damage, and this is bad, because then I go into the Arcanine fight while I'm still asleep from rest. All of that contributes to me getting a third reset here. So uh, Seal, remember at the start of the video when I said that you might be able to redeem yourself in my eyes? Yeah. This is not happening today. <laughs> Finally, I win on the fourth attempt against Blaine. This shouldn't have been hard, but it really was. In contrast, and giving me a little bit of, uh, I guess, like momentum back, uh, Paralysis and Crits makes the fight against Sabrina really easy for Seal today. At Giovanni, I can't outspeed. Dugtrio's Earthquake paired with Persian Slash finished Seal off in the first fight. Funnily enough, the next fight Seal actually gets taken down to 4 hit points, but that isn't enough for him to win, because I just need to be able to use Surf against his final 3 team members and the sweep is secured. From here, it should be mostly easy until Lance. Flareon means that the final rival is easy, Lorelei is simple, just steal Amnesia, Agatha would be a guarantee if only Hypnosis didn't work when I had a substitute. That's frustrating, I do lose to her once, but then I win on my next attempt, so it's not fully inconsistent. Okay, it's time for Lance. I've arrived here at the same level that I was last time, and this is by design. I think that the champion's going to be easier because he has Flareon, so I don't need the levels, and this way Seal is going to save some extra time. Lance is really annoying in the first fight with a Hyper Potion, and then Gyarados uses Hyper Beam, gets a crit, and knocks Seal out. Just great. In the next fight that doesn't happen, I take Gyarados down, and then I miss Blizzard on Dragonair and get paralyzed. Seal misses again, takes damage, and then the following Dragonair knocks me out with Hyper Beam. <sighs> in the third fight, the Gyarados takes Seal down to one hit point. Uh, you'll notice that I don't have rest on my moveset, so I can't heal. Also, Blizzard misses again. Come on! Seriously! Okay, so this isn't good. Gyarados crits with Hyper Beam, that's a fourth loss. It crits with Hyper Beam again, that's five. And then Luck finally sides with me. Seal freezes Gyarados. I knock out the Dragonairs using Blizzard, I'm not stopping to grab Ice Beam this time, Surf takes care of the Aerodactyl, and with my final PP I pray that I hit the Dragonite. Blizzard does, and Seal's off to face the champion for its second time today, but actually like the 4,000th time for me, it's just so frustrating this fight, ah, well, it's Flareon, it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine. Sand Slash is an easy one hit with Surf. At Alkazam, I Mimic Recover. It's a great healing move, and it's a lot better than Rest against the Cloister when it's stalling you. After that, I knock the Alkazam out, but I did get hit with a single Kinesis along the way. And that's really annoying. Uh, oh wait, I mean, I meant two Kinesises. So, uh, yeah. I run out of Blizzards at Executor, so now I need to knock it out with Body Slam, but I'm missing so much, and Leech Seed is healing it. It takes a while, but I finally do it, and Magneton comes out. I miss, it paralyzes me, moves first on the next turn, and knocks Seal out with Thunderbolt. Alright, uh, maybe the champion isn't going to be easy. I think that getting hit with Kinesis was what did it though. I'll just skip mimicking Recover this time and knock the Alkazam out as soon as possible. Unfortunately, Blizzard hates me, and it misses first turn against Executor. However, it pays me back on the next turn and crits, and that makes the Pineapple Tree go down in a single hit. I use Surf on Magneton, it does half, the Magnets paralyze Seal, and then knock me out with Thunderbolt. 
Okay, so uh, perhaps mimicking Earthquake will give me a way past the Magneton, but this comes at a cost. Now Sandslash can deal damage to Seal. Also, Earthquake doesn't improve my fight against Alakazam, so it gets another Kinesis in. Blizzard misses Executor, because of course it does, and then it crits. Okay, so that's a repeat of last fight. Please, Earthquake, just hit the Magneton. It does, and it gets the job done. And now, I have a problem. Cloister is next, and Seal doesn't have a good way to defeat it. I have no recovery options with this moveset. So that's a third loss. So if lack of recovery is the problem, I can just teach Seal Rest in the place of Blizzard and go a bit slower against the Executor, still having access to Earthquake for the Magneton. But this doesn't actually solve the problem with Cloister. It heals too much from Leech Seed and deals too much damage while I rest, and then it becomes a wall that Seal can't get past again. Ah. <sighs> Okay, so maybe I shouldn't be using Recovery. I can mimic Earthquake and then use Toxic to ensure that Cloister will go down. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking. I think I'm frustrated at this point because I can't buy enough time for Toxic to work, so I end up fainting again. <sighs> well, that's uh, five resets. Actually, six. Because I tried this strategy again. I have no idea why. In Fight 7, I realized that I need Recover and Rest in combination with Toxic, but Alakazam gets a critical hit and finishes the fight before I get to use my Poison Powers. Next, Magneton uses Earthquake and knocks Seal out. So yeah, this is the most frustrated I've been making one of these videos. A lot of you are like, you play a lot of Pokemon Yellow, hope you're taking care of yourself. Actually, I love playing these games. I genuinely am so happy when every day I can just sit down in the morning and my job is to play through this game that I love so much. But this was getting to me. Seal is so frustrating. You can really see here, I just give up on the Toxic Strat and I'm just like deciding to use Body Slam, Blizzard, and Surf for the fight now. I'm using Blizzard turn one against Magneton, just like, hey, maybe it's gonna freeze. As long as I make it through here with full health, like I'm fine, right? Uh, yeah, but that doesn't always happen, so that's 10 resets. I try Recover again, I mimic it, finish off the Magneton, and then heal at Cloister. I've got to hunker down now and prepare myself for a long fight here. And then it gets a crit with Spike Cannon and knocks Seal out. I was so close. In fight 12, I get lucky and freeze the Magneton. This means that I'm going to get to Cloister with green health, and I'll have a little bit more time to use Surf as a result before I have to heal. And then my third Surf crits, and that knocks it out. All that's left is Flareon. I use Surf, it survives, sets up Reflect, and then Seal wins, clocking in with a time of 1 hour, 35 minutes, and 9 seconds. So, it finished the game at level 66 with 26 resets and a game time of 4 hours and 49 minutes. My second playthrough, against Flareon, was 1 minute and 39 seconds faster than when Seal faced Jolteon. I had 3 extra resets and finished at the same level. I did shave off 4 minutes of in-game time, but the result's not very impressive. Overall, I'm quite disappointed with these playthroughs, and I was really disappointed with my tests as well. The electric types on the champions team just really messed things up for Seal. Jolteon is more of a challenge, but the Flareon team was still surprising. I went into it expecting an easy result, and I got walled for a while and really thrown off. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Paris, Diglett, and Onyx all got better second playthrough results than Seal did. And I felt like I was being easy on Seal by letting it face Flareon the second time. Granted, Seal did perform better than all three of them on its first playthrough, and that was against Jolteon. That makes Seal quite difficult for me to rank. When comparing first playthroughs, Seal had more resets than Diglett and Paris, but less than Onyx. For its second playthrough, it performed worse than all three of them. It got a significantly better game time result than those three. It was also a lower level than Onyx and Diglett, but a higher level than Paris. Like, Paris was really good. Anyone else surprised about that? I'm still so surprised about that. If I had to make a call right now, which, uh, by the way, I don't, because this is my video. <laughs> I'd put Seal in front of Onyx and Diglett, but behind Paris, just because of how easy Paris felt. However, I'm going to do something that I've never done before, and don't expect this to be a common occurrence on the channel. In this case, I am going to reset Seal's clock in the second playthrough, and play through the end of the game again against Lance and the champion. I reset and lost a lot of time here, largely because I didn't get a chance to test this fight because I switched it up from the first playthrough. As I play these playthroughs, I have a Python script that automatically backs up my save files. It writes to the file name the time that's on the real-time timer, so I can go back to the exact millisecond that that save was taken at. 
So in this case, Seal is going into the fight against Lance with a game time of 1 hour, 16 minutes, and 40 seconds. And that's with 10 resets. So I uh, begin this fight with a bit of bad luck, which uh, apparently is the theme. I chose to play with Seal after all. It's like, I deserve this or something. Blizzard misses and Hyper Beam hits, doing almost half to Seal. The next Blizzard does its job, but the third one misses. So yeah, I uh, don't have rest, and without recovery and enough PP for all the dragons, Seal goes down. In the next fight, Blizzard comes through, freezing the Gyarados. From there, I knock it out with Body Slam, sweep the Dragonairs with two Blizzards, take some damage from Aerodactyl, and pray that Blizzard is going to connect with Dragonite. It does, and Seal's off to the champion, incurring only one reset against Lance this time. One thing I noticed here going into the champion fight is that I'm actually at a different level. Uh, the reason here is that I skipped a rare candy when I went into the Lance fight. That's because again, I took off several days before I came back and did this again. I had to like debate in my mind if this was even fair to let Seal do this. Anyways, yeah, I'm, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, sorry, yeah. Normally these playthroughs, I do them all in one day, but this one was like a week. <laughs> Brutal! Anyways, back to the playthrough. When I was watching back all my footage, I was convinced that my moveset featuring Toxic is more consistent than the one with Blizzard. Expecting accuracy and freezes is just not a place that I want to be. Unfortunately, I don't get to use Toxic in my first fight against the champion because Alakazam just crits me. <sighs> In the second fight, I time my rest poorly, Executor faints from poison damage, and Magneton comes out while Seal is still asleep. So that won't do. One inconsistency that I'm not able to eliminate here is that Alakazam has Kinesis. Luckily, it doesn't use it all the time, but it does in the third fight, which causes me to miss when it matters most, against the Magneton. I try to knock it out with a second earthquake, but uh, yeah, it doesn't work. So uh, this happened two fights in a row. Very frustrating. Then Alakazam crits Seal with Psybeam, and it was at this point that I really, really, really wanted to just stop using this Pokemon. I did not expect, of all the Pokemon Yellow playthroughs that I'm going to do, for uh, Seal to be the one that's got me most frustrated to this point. Like, yeah, I did Jigglypuff a long time ago. It was fine. I did Porygon like a hundred times. That was fun. Seal? Awful. All right, so I'm gonna finish this. I mimic Earthquake and I use Surf to knock Sandslash out. Seal didn't take very much damage, and that's good. Alakazam's next, it gets a Kinesis in, and then it faints. For Executor, I've gotta slow things down. I use Toxic while it spams Leech Seed. At least the good AI makes this thing a breeze. It's nice to have one Pokemon that's just like very consistent. Magneton follows, I use Earthquake, do a lot of damage, Seal survives Thunderbolt and knocks the opponent out. Okay, Cloister time. This one was slow. I have to use Toxic to poison it. Once I do that, I'll be able to outlast and move on to the Flareon. However, Toxic is missing now because I took a Kinesis, and Toxic already doesn't have 100% accuracy, so like, you know what they say. Finally, Cloyster goes down, but Seal only has orange health left for Flareon. I use Surf, it does so much, Flareon survives with a Sliver, Seal takes some Leech Seed damage, and then Flareon uses Reflect. After that, I knock it out. In my re-attempt of Lance and the Champion, Seal clocks in with a time of 1 hour, 26 minutes, and 39 seconds. It finished the game with 16 resets at level 68 and with a game time of 4 hours and 55 minutes. So now let's rank Seal. Uh, first I'm going to discuss real-time performances. Seal's adjusted time puts it between Dragonair and Ghastly's first playthroughs and ahead of Paris, Diglett, and Onyx. Without adjustments, both its first and second playthroughs ranked behind the second playthrough results that I got with Diglett, Paris, and Onyx, as I said before. Seal got a better game time than Paris, Onyx, and Diglett, and it did this with more resets. It finished at a lower level than Diglett and Onyx, but at a higher level than Paris. I think it deserves a spot ahead of these three, because water is very good in Kanto, but it's very close with Paris. I think subjectively I want to put it below Paris, because the little bug grass type like really impressed, and uh, Seal was shockingly bad. As a result of all of this, uh, Seal did not earn my love today. <laughs> I don't think that this thing ever will, but uh, I'm excited to give Dugong a chance in the future, and I'm sure that Seal will get another playthrough at some point. There are uh, other Generation 1 games that I'm excited about after all. Anyways, like, subscribe, ring the chime echo, and comment because I gotta read them all. Thanks so much to all my patrons. Your support enables me to continue making this content, and this after all is my dream. Thanks so much for making it a reality. If you've made it this far, you're incredible. Now, it's bloopers time. Seal just breaks that illusion for me. It prevents me from spending my disbelief. <laughs> 
So maybe it can prove itself to me and finally earn the respect that it's been hoping. Oh my gosh, what am I saying? For its base spats, for its base spats specifically. Oh my gosh. <laughs> An added complication is that I don't have any status moves to use in the case that it charges ch bide. Ah. By the way, I uh, get a flinch while Onyx is biting, but it turns out that it just... Ah, come on. That was a hard sentence, actually. And then I smashed Jesse and, Jesse and James. Ruined that line. And then I smashed Jesse and, Jesse and James. Ah, just... So people said on one of my other videos that, like, I'm trying to do a Sean Connery impression. <laughs> I'm really not trying to do a Sean Connery impression. Just Joshy and James. It's just like, I just can't stop myself. Come on. Okay, I can do it this time. No Sean Connery. Go away, Sean Connery. I know I'm like the James Bond of uh, Pokemon Yellow, but uh really don't want to be Sean Connery right now. And then I defeat Jesse and James. I'm changing sh Smash because I think Smash is doing it. The hidden elixir just after Nugget Bridge lets Seal progress through the route without having to retu return to Sir. Oh, come on. I've played enough Gen 2, I should know how to say the word, word ugh, the word return. Apparently I can't say anything. <laughs> Come on. The hidden elixir just after Nugget Bridge lets Seal progress through the route without having to use return. Ugh, use return? Now I'm thinking of it as a move. It's not a move. Not yet. Not yet, but forever after Gen 2. The hidden elixir that's just after Nugget Bridge lets me replenish Seal's PP and allow it to proceed through the entire route without having to return to Cerulean to heal. That line. The hidden elixir just after Nugget Bridge lets Seal progress through the route without having to return to return. The hidden elixir just after Nugget Bridge lets Seal progress through the route without having to return to return. The hidden elixir just after Nugget Bridge lets Seal progress through the route without having to return to Cerulean to heal. I finally did it. I did it. That line is done. <laughs> done. No more of that. That's it.